Well, guys, it's free in the morning when I'm doing this, but unfortunately, I'm going to be way too busy in the middle of the day tomorrow for me to work on this, so I have to do it, like, right now and get upload first thing in the morning. So, anyways, here is my Week 17 picks of the 2021 NFL season, the first time ever that... Actually, no, first time since 1993 that we've had more than 17 weeks. But anyways, last week, I went... 10 and 6 once again. I've had back to back 10 and 6s. God, I haven't won over 10 games since week 7. Jeez, it's been a long time. As I have not been having a good year so far this year. But hey, better than the 8 and 6. No, no, I tied the last, last week's record 10 and 6. So same in the end. And of course, here's the playoff stands and the regular season stands at the season end of the day. In the AFC, it's the Chiefs with the bye, with the Dolphins at the Titans, the Patriots at Bengals, and Colts at Bills. And in the NFC, it's Packers with the bye. With Eagles at Cowboys, 49ers at Rams, and Cardinals at Buccaneers. And I did not get to look up the my Super Bowl predictions. Because I've been so busy with other things. I don't have time right now. So I need to get this up video quickly. Because, God, it's already almost free 30 more. And I want to go to bed soon. Okay, so anyways. <clears throat> we start off our week 17 with all our Sunday games. There's no more Thursday night. As we start off with the Eagles at the football team. As the Eagles won the last one. The football team hasn't beaten them since 2020, and the Eagles haven't won in Landover since 2019. The Eagles are trying to get their first win in season since 2019. And if they beat the football team and the um, Saints, Falcons, and Vikings all lose, they will clinch a playoff spot for the first time since 2019. And if the football team loses, they will be officially eliminated from the playoffs. So... This is pretty important for both teams. The Eagles are trying to get a playoff spot. The football team is just trying to hold on for dear life. So the, the Eagles crushed the Giants last week after they had a slow start against them. And the football team, oh my god, they got obliterated by the Cowboys. Like, all like the update, all the fix in their defense had over the last few weeks, gone. Now they look like back to their terrible self that they were at the beginning of the year. Nothing's going really right for them. Although... They did put up a good fight I fought against the um, Eagles. But unfortunately for... I probably would pick the football team, but unfortunately, they're just not looking good right now. They've lost three in a row. The Eagles looking like a little bit on a roll right now. So I'm actually going to pick the Eagles. But I guess I won't be surprised if the um, football team maybe gets it. Alright, then we get to the next one, which was originally 4 p.m. As the, it's the Rams at the Ravens for the first time since 2015. As the Ravens won the last four, the Rams have not beaten them since 2003. As the Rams, if they win and the Cardinals lose, they will clinch the NFC West for the first time since 2018. So, the Rams last week, they, um, oh my god, the name in the team, oh, that's right, they beat the Vikings in a close one. Although, Matthew Stafford played terrible in that game. The fact that they won it despite... How terrible he played is quite an accomplishment. And the Ravens, they got absolutely obliterated by the Bengals as they now lost four in a row as they're barely holding on for dear life in that conference as they really badly need this win to stay alive in the playoff race. But hey, like I told you all year, that record they had was just a lie. They're now playing like how they actually were throughout the season. And... I have no idea, honestly, if Lamar is even playing. And honestly, I don't think it really matters. Like, he just hasn't played good this year, really. Sorry, it's just the reality of it. So, I have no idea if Lamar is going to play. But honestly, I don't think it's going to matter. I'm going to pick the Rams to get this one. And then it's the Buccaneers at the Jets for the first time since 2013. The Buccaneers won the last one. The Jets haven't beaten them since 2013. And the Buccaneers have never won in New York, believe it or not. And it also reminds me, too, the Rams have never beaten the Ravens in Baltimore, too, since I forgot to mention that. So, anyways, the Buccaneers crushed the Panthers last week as they've clinched the division, as they're still trying to hopefully clinch, I mean, get, still be in range for home field advantage throughout the NFC side of the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Jets, they beat the Jaguars as, although their stats still don't look really good, they have turned it around. Turned it around quite a bit these last few weeks. They've played a lot better. But, of course, you're going up against a juggernaut Buccaneers team. Hey, you know what? I give the Buccaneers credit after they crushed the Panthers last week. Their defensive stats are starting to look really good again. Because their defense has not looked really good at all compared to last year. 
but I'm going to pick the Buccaneers for this one. This should be pretty obvious. Then we get to a big one in the um, AFC side, as it's the Dolphins at the Titans for the first time since 2015. As the Dolphins won the last two, the Titans haven't beaten them since 2012. And the Dolphins, no, the Titans haven't won at home since 2009. So the Dolphins are trying to get their second straight win in season. And um, the Titans, if they win or the Colts lose, they will clinch a playoff spot for the third year in a row. And the AFC South for the second year in a row. So they really need this win badly. So the Dolphins, how about that? Remember earlier in the year when they were 1-7? Well, guess what? Now they're 8-7. and seven. One win away from having a win season. And right now at the season end of the day, they would be in the playoffs. What an unbelievable turnaround. I think they said on Monday night too when they beat the Saints that it was the first time ever a team had a 7-game winning streak and a 7-game losing streak in the season. Unbelievable. That team has really turned around. Although their offense still looks pretty bad their defense has really really turned around really badly i mean really good like they even showed the stats on monday night that defense is honestly up there as like one of the elite right now don't let those stats fool you they look kind of average they are elite right now meanwhile the titans they since the team won't come to my head who they last beat but i know they won it just wouldn't won't come to my head for some reason but they're still, I'm a little bit suspect on them though. Like we said, no Derrick Henry. Julio Jones had no impact whatsoever. And Ryan Tannehill's played dog shit this year. It is shaping up to be maybe a possible upset. Oh, that's right now. Remember, they beat the, they beat the 49ers last Thursday night. That's right. C comeback too. It is looking like an upset too. And now they got the really tough Dolphins coming in now. You know what? I'm actually going to pick the Dolphins in an upset. But watch, the Titans are going to still somehow win this despite the fact that they shouldn't be winning the games at all. Alright, then it's the Jaguars at the Patriots for the first time since 2015. As the Jaguars won the last one, the Patriots haven't beaten them since 2015. And the Jaguars... Actually, no, this is incorrect. I don't know where this one came in. As the Jaguars have not beaten the Patriots in Foxborough ever. So, anyways... The Jaguars lost to the Jets last week as, once again, that offense can't get anything going as Trevor Lawrence was like eight games in a row now where he still hasn't thrown a touchdown. Unbelievable, terrible production as they just look bad. As possible, they might possibly clinch home number one overall pick if they lose and the Lions win, I think, maybe. That's possible. But anyways, the Patriots, they lost two in a row now as they got... I thought it's kind of spanked by the Bills, but it's still set for them. If they win, as I'm looking at the thing right now for the Patriots, where's it at right here? If they win and the Dolphins lose or a couple other things happen, they can clinch a playoff spot for the first time since 2019. So the playoff spot's still there. And of course, the Jaguars are the worst team in the league on paper in terms of record I don't know if I would say they're the worst team in terms of stats. I think the Texans are worse, which we're going to get to later. But they are definitely a very terrible team. So I'm picking the Patriots to easily get this. Then we get to a big one still in the AFC. As it's the Raiders at the Colts for the first time since 2019. This is the fourth year in a row they've played each other. The Colts won the last one. The Raiders haven't beaten them since 2019. And the Colts haven't beaten them at home since 2013. As the Raiders try to get their first win in season since 2013. 16 so the Colts if let me look at this up again the Colts if they win or if a couple teams lose they're in the playoffs for the second year in a row in fact looks like if they just win they're in so pretty big for them to get that as they um they beat the Cardinals in a pretty dominant performance last week as they've now won what was it three in a row now looking really really good and honestly, kind of a scary team you might have to worry about in the playoffs. And I see I actually at 111. Yes, they're 111 points. That's too funny. Meanwhile, the Raiders beat the Broncos in a defensive struggle, but they still aren't looking really too good right now. Honestly, their offense, which was so elite, remember, earlier in the year, they've really struggled like hell these last few weeks. It's only their defense that salvaged them to keep them within striking distance of um in the playoffs but i'm gonna pick the colts for this one then we get to a huge one in the afc as the chiefs are at the Bengals for the first time since 2015 
The Bengals, you no, know, the Chiefs, I mean, won the last one. The Bengals haven't beaten them since 2015, and the Chiefs have not won in Cincinnati since 1984. And the Chiefs, it's set up for them. If they win, or the um Bengals, well, actually, they would be, the Bengals would lose them if they beat them. If they win, or the um Broncos, not the Broncos, the Patriots, Bills, and Titans all lose. Well, actually, no, they can't. They only had the win, and they clinch home field advantage for the um, second year in a row. That's right. Meanwhile, the Bengals, if they win and the um, Ravens lose, well, actually, it doesn't matter, if the Raven, it doesn't matter about the Ravens if they um, if the Bengals win. And if the um, Browns beat the Steelers, the Bengals will clinch a playoff spot in the AFC North for the first time since 2015. So a lot is on the line from hell. If they win out... And the Chiefs lose out, and hopefully for them, the Patriots, Bills, Titans, and Colts, I think, don't, like, tie them. The Bengals still can clinch home field advantage. It's still right up in the air after they clobber the Ravens. This could be one hell of an offensive shootout. But the um, Bengals got to worry about the Chiefs' defense, and the Bengals have been pretty inconsistent. They've crushed a lot of teams, but they've also been shut down a lot of times, too. So, it's... It can go any way with them, but I'm going to pick the Chiefs for this. Their offense is better. Their defense is... Actually, their Bengals defense might actually be better in some regards. But remember, most of the, the Chiefs' terrible defensive stats because they're earlier in the year. Because they've their defense has been really dominated like the last few weeks like the Dolphins. Alright, so then it's the Giants at the Bears for the third year in a row as the Bears won the last two. The Giants haven't beaten them since 2018. They haven't won in Chicago since 2007. As the Giants are eliminated from the playoffs once again. As they got crushed by the Eagles last week to no one's surprise. And the Bears actually stunned us by beating the Seahawks when they were down by quite a lot. They went, hey, just like the Ravens remember the last few weeks where they went for a two-point conversion and failed. The Bears did, and this time they succeeded as they beat the Seahawks. As they have a lot, maybe trying to salvage like a... Solid return. I mean, I'm solid. I'm um, finished to the end of the year. Hopefully, it still doesn't. Hope it still leads to Nagy getting fired because that team needs to get massive rebuild. Like everything needs to be cleaned out in that team. But they're definitely better than the Giants right now. Giants, honestly, like right now in, in the NFC, they might be looking like one of the worst teams in the NFC. Even the Lions don't, don't seem as bad. I'm picking the Bears for this one. All right. So then, it's the Falcons at the Bills for the first time since 2013. Technically, 2005, since their 2013 game was in Toronto, remember. As the Bills won the last one, the, the um, Falcons haven't beaten them since 2013, and they haven't won in Buffalo since... No, the Bills haven't beaten the Falcons at home since 1995, I mean to say. As the Falcons, if they lose, and the Eagles and 49ers win, they are eliminated from the playoffs. And the Bills, as I'm looking right now, let's see. Yeah, if they win and a whole bunch of teams lose, they will clinch a playoff spot for the third year in a row. So a lot on the line for both of these teams as the Falcons just barely held on to beat the Lions as they're trying to get back to 500 again. And the Bills spanked the Patriots pretty damn good. They needed that victory. As they're taking, as they're back in the lead in the division, they still have the um home field advantage up for grabs. Still, that's still a possibility. But I'm gonna pick the Bills for this one. All right. So then we get to our 4 p.m. games, starting off with the Texans at the 49ers for the first time since 2013. As the 49ers won the last two, the Texans haven't beaten them since 2009, and they have not won in San Francisco. So, anyways, the 49ers, just like the Eagles, if they win. And the Falcons, Pam, no, Falcons, Saints, and Vikings all lose. They will clinch a playoff spot for the first time since 2019. And then it'll be just about keeping ahead of the Eagles. That way they didn't get the sixth spot. So anyways, the Texans, they actually won last week. Although for some reason it won't come to my head. Oh, that's right. They embarrassed the Chargers. That honestly was probably the most impressive victory for this year. Not only did they beat the Chargers, who are kind of a playoff team right now, but they spanked them. That is impressive as they somehow, to my stunned belief, they've actually matched their win total last year with the chance to still improve on it. And that's without Watson. Stunning. Honestly, you might have to say, um, 
Dave Cauley's doing a good job as coaching that terrible team, although they're still terrible. Meanwhile, the 49ers lost a tough one to the Titans, which they did not need, but they're still within striking distance of the playoffs, so they really need it. And I'm going to pick the 49ers to get this. But hey, watch out for the Texans. Don't underestimate them. All right, then we get to the Broncos at the Chargers. As the Broncos won the last one, the Chargers haven't beaten them since 2020, and the Broncos haven't won in L.A. since 2019, as the Broncos are trying to avoid their fifth straight losing season. And if they lose, and yeah, actually, if they lose, they are eliminated from the playoffs for like the seventh year in a row, I think. Meanwhile, the Chargers are trying to get their first win in season since 2019. And possibly, let me go look. I think they might have a playoff scenario. Nope, they do not. No playoff scenario yet for the Chargers. So anyways, the Broncos had a defensive slugfest against the Raiders, which unfortunately they lost. Meanwhile, the Chargers have now lost two in a row. And that was a terrible loss they had against the Texans. As they got to be concerned. They're honestly kind of underachieving what they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're still right there in the playoff mix, but eh, it's just not looking really good for them. They really need to win out to have any shot to make the playoffs. It's just not looking good for them. But I'm going to pick them to get those, this win over the Broncos. But hey, the Broncos crushed you early in the year, so hey, maybe they can do it again. All right, then it's the Panthers at the Saints. As the Panthers won the last one, the Saints haven't beaten them since 2020. And the Panthers haven't won in New Orleans since 2018. As the Panthers are still trying to improve their record from last year. As they've gotten crushed by the Buccaneers last week. Meanwhile, the Saints got crushed by the Dolphins, which was badly not what they needed. And if they lose, they'll suffer their first losing season since 2016. And if they lose and the Eagles and 49ers win, they will be eliminated from the playoffs. All that momentum they had from that really strong start of year with Winston, like, all gone. And this, honestly, is going to most likely come down to a defensive struggle. As as we saw these last few weeks, I mean, honestly, like, most of the season, the Saints are just nothing without Jameis Winston. Once he was gone, this team just fell off, all fell off a cliff. But, although the Panthers destroyed the Saints earlier in the year, and statistically, as you can see, they do have a better defense than them. I still trust the Saints more as they still, on paper, in terms of, like, players are a better balanced team. So I'm still going to pick the Saints to get this. But, hey, I guess I can't be surprised that the, the um, Panthers somehow get it either. Then it's the Lions at the Seahawks for the first time since 2015. As the Seahawks won the last two, the Lions haven't beaten them since 2012. And, the Se and they haven't won in Seattle since 1999, back when the Seahawks were in the AFC, for crying out loud. So... The Lions lost a close one to the Falcons, and the Seahawks blew it against the Bears in the snow. That was the first time Seattle had snow, too, since 2008, if any of you didn't know that. That was insane. But they blew it as that was unfortunate for them, as they were now eliminated from the playoffs. It's just nothing's going right for them. And you got to be worried here, Seahawks. You did lose to the Bears, and I think the Bears are a worse team than the Lions. So if you're going to lose to the Bears... What makes you think you can beat the Lions? That's a really tough one. You got to worry about that. But I think I'll still slightly give the edge to the Seahawks for this one. But I won't be surprised if the Lions go up there and beat them. Then we get to a big one, AFC, NFC East. I mean, NFC East. NFC Conference. As it's the Cardinals at the Cowboys for the second year in a row. As the Cardinals won the last one. Remember that blowout on Monday night? The, Cardinal, the Cowboys haven't beaten them since 2015. And they haven't beaten and the, they haven't beaten the Cardinals at home since 2005, believe it or not. It's been a long time. All right, so of course, oh boy, the Cardinals—they've now lost three in a row. Oh my God! And statistically, their stats are still playing pretty good. They look like still like one of the best teams in the NFC, believe it or not, in terms of their stats. But they're not looking good right now. They're on the verge of not. They're on the verge of. Losing their chance of getting the division. They've already blew their chance to get home field advantage. Now they're on the verge of not even winning the division. That was a blown opportunity for them after they lost to the Colts on Christmas. Meanwhile, the Cowboys got a massive, and I mean a massive victory against the football team as they've clinched the division. As they're gunning for that um home field advantage, which they need too because they already lost to the Buccaneers. So that's one tiebreaker against them. They need to get that home field advantage. And 
Surprisingly, their defensive stats don't look as impressive as they did after they destroyed the football team last week. But this team is definitely pretty scary too. So definitely going to pick the Cowboys for this one. So then we get to Sunday night as it's the big one too. As the Vikings are at the Packers. The Vikings won the last two, believe it or not. As the, Pack, the, the Packers haven't beaten them since 2020. They haven't won at home since 2019. All right, so the Vikings are trying to avoid their second straight losing season. And if they lose and the 49ers and Eagles win, they are eliminated from the playoffs. And the Packers, maybe there's a possibility. Let me go look. Yeah, they can clinch home field advantage if they win and the Cowboys, Rams, and Buccaneers all lose. So, home field advantage they can get for the second year in a row. It's right up there for grabs, even though I don't think they're a better team than last year. So, anyways, once again for the Rams. Even though Stafford played terrible, you still lose a game. And once again, they're eighth, all eight of their losses, all within this one score. So, think about that. The Vikings could theoretically be 15-0 right now. Like, it's amazing how all their losses are close. Like, it's just stunning. Now, unfortunately for them, Kirk Cousins is on the COVID protocol, so he's not going to play at all in this game, which is unfortunate for them. Meanwhile, the Packers held on to beat the very feisty Browns, but they still got the win as they're trying to lock up the, the home field advantage once again. Now, remember, the Vikings have beaten them the last two times, and with Kirk Cousins, they're actually, the Vikings have been 1-1-1 one, one, and one since he's been the starter in, at going into Lambeau. But, of course, he's not playing, so, like, all, like, any chance the Packers, I mean, the Vikings had for this game is now gone. So, I'm picking the Packers easily to get this one. So, then we get to the final Monday night game of the year. As it's the Browns at the Steelers. As the Steelers won the last one. The Browns haven't beaten them since 2020. And it's, they haven't won in Heinz Field since 2003 in the regular season, remember. As they're trying to avoid their first <coughs> losing season since 2019. And the Steelers are trying to avoid, I mean, get their... Another non-losing season. They haven't had a losing season since 2003. And they can theoretically go 500 if they win and lose one. 8-8-1. Eight, eight, the only way you can go 500. <laughs> and of course, whoever loses this game is definitely eliminated from the playoffs no matter what. So th this is a do or die moment for both teams. They really badly need this. As the Browns, they, on the one hand, they put up a good game against the Packers. But Baker Mayfield played absolutely terrible. That was a terrible performance he played. Kind of disappointed in that regard. Meanwhile, the Steelers, oh my god, they got crushed by the Chiefs. I don't even think I was expecting that bad of a crushing. So, it's going to come down to who do you trust more, as neither team is doing really good right now. I probably would give the edge to the Steelers more than this one. Since the Browns are just so inconsistent. And the Steelers always find, remember, some way to stay around 500. So those are my picks for week 17. I cannot wait for, um, oh, that's right, there's no Thursday night games. I can't say that. So anyways, my picks for this week are the Eagles over the football team, the Rams over the Ravens, the Buccaneers over the Jets, the Dolphins over the Titans, the Patriots over the Jaguars, the Colts over the Raiders, Chiefs over the Bengals, the Bears over the Giants, Bills over the Falcons, 49ers over the Texans, Chargers over the Broncos, Saints over the Panthers, Seahawks over the Lions, Cowboys over the Cardinals, Packers over the Vikings, and Steelers over the Browns. So see you guys most likely next Friday for the final week because they're supposed to have two games upcoming this upcoming week on Saturday, and I don't know what times they're going to be at, but I doubt they're going to be like at both of them being like at 8 p.m. I'm sure it's going to be like 1 at 4 and then 1 at 8. So if it's that, if that's the case, I'm going to do my picks on Friday instead. That will have enough time for my picks to get ready before the game start. So see you guys next time for the final week. Hard to believe that week 16, I mean week 17 this year is just not enough. It's a really weird feeling now.